Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to episode number 32 of Noob Pros. I'm AJ and today we'll be looking at a game um, on the new map uh, Fire Salient or Fiery Salient or Fiery Arc. <laughs> this uh, map has had uh, quite a bit of uh, names. I'm playing in the STB1 which is the Japanese uh, tier 10 uh, medium tank. Uh, it is an amazing tank. Um, it has very good mobility, um, good gun depression. Um, <clears throat> the turret on this thing is actually uh, pretty strong, and uh, it it seems to be uh, the tank in which I seem to have very good games. Um, if you are a medium tank player, um, you should definitely think about going down this line. Uh, though you have to bear to two very bad tanks, the Cheeto and the Shiri. So, and with that being said, um, on this map, um, what I like to do is I like to go to uh, this spot right here and see if I can get shots up the hill. Um, but you have to be careful uh, if there's already on the map. And, uh, you know, the T-71 um, is Anything? sort of like going around spotting people. And, you know, I did not want to be shot by RD like right off the bat. So. I keep moving and you know so long as the T-71's alive he's gonna be a menace uh, to us so I'm trying to figure out a way to take him out. I'm in a platoon with uh, a couple of my friends um, and they are trying to f uh, trying to figure out where to go. Um, my friend the E-100 uh, decides to take my spot which you know he can use fairly effectively and the, uh, and the other platoon mate goes up the hill. Uh, in order to light stuff up on the ridge so uh, the E100 can shoot something. I am actually trying to take up the T71 uh, without um, exposing myself um, and losing all my hit points. Um, but over here, you know, that will eventually happen. I make a couple of mistakes and, you know, lose a chunk of my health. Um, again, by all means, I'm not. Uh, an expert at the game, you know, I'm sure there's people who are better understanding of the game than I do uh, But what I just try to do is try to make people understand why certain decisions uh, should be made um, So over here, I <laughs> tried to take a shot uh, at the at the tank that was spotted But unluckily for me, the T-71 just happens to pass by as I was uh, zooming in to take a shot And I accidentally TK him I do apologize to him, telling him, you know, I it was not my intention to take him. I was just taking, trying to take a shot at the Canarman uh, who was spotted on the hill. Um, but you know, alas, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't no good. So our friend on the hill, uh, unfortunately, uh, loses uh, his tank, and it leaves up to me uh, to carry some of the weight. So over here, uh, two things I know from being shot uh, about what tanks I'm being shot by. Um, so I try to, um, you know, poke out and think that, you know, whatever TDs are must not have shots as I'm down in the depression. But I was wrong in assuming that. Apparently the waffle was sitting high somewhere right where the Tiger 2 is. And, you know, apparently had shots on me. So I lose a chunk of my life here uh, for no good reason. Uh, you know, I decide to back out of this situation. Um, you know, staying here would not have accomplished anything. Um, you know, I would have just died. I take uh, a speculative shot on the Tiger too. Um, you know, didn't know at the time whether it had to hit or it didn't. It apparently did. Um, and uh, you know, now I see the E50M, which is one of their better players uh, in the game, prowling the mid like I am. Uh, trying to see um, what can and cannot be done. I'm still trying to get shots up the hill so the hill doesn't get overwhelmed and while I'm doing it. Um, you know, um, I did uh, take out uh, one tank that was low on health. I see the Tiger 2 is also low on health. I fire as he goes dark, uh, it connects and the Tiger 2 is out of the game. Uh, I back off and, you know, decide to. Uh, go um, elsewhere to be more useful uh, but then I see you know 
uh, an easy shot on the Centurion 1. He dives into the dip and I'm not interested in coming over the top just to shoot him um, because I would have easily given my position away at the time. So again I'm still thinking um, you know um, whether I can make shots or if there's anywhere else I would be more useful. Um, I come back to where my original position was and you know try to see if uh, you know I have shots somewhere um, that could uh, make this uh, games uh, slightly more useful. I'm trying to take a shot at the VZ triple one here. Uh, you know, I see that there's a gap in between the buildings. <laughs> I I just like follow him through the buildings and take a blind shot and him heap connects as well. So I guess uh, I'm two for two for blind shots today. So and uh, that makes uh, this. Uh, game slightly more uh, even for now um, so at this point like the game didn't seem like it was gonna be like um, you know this one-sided affair but th the thing that you have to keep in mind if you're a relatively new player um, is that the map the sorry not the map the game is decided by map control because mediums uh, especially mediums and TDs can then move around much more easily use cover take shots at you. The more map control you have, the better it is for your team um, uh, to succeed. And generally that's what it boils down to towards the end of the game. Over here I decide to take this position and put a shot in the mouse, but apparently the mouse got taken out. Um, so Centurion comes over the hill. Um, what I was trying to do to put a shot into him and pays for with his life. Uh, we see the Waffle E100 is spo uh, spotted on the 1 2 line, and I am going that way in order to see if I can like take him out as fast as I can. Um, but by the time I get there, um, you know, unfortunately uh, for us, he kind of like uh, starts backing off and disappears. So, again, I'm running around the map. With mediums, when you have like when the map is open, you should try relocating as often. Because if you're sitting in the same spot, um, you know, and you don't have good shots, you're probably getting lit, and um, you know, and RD will probably zoom in on you and take easy shots on you. Over here, I try to, you know, tell them, tell the 704 and the RD that I will try to spot the waffle, but I don't. Um, I do notice at this time that there's two other TDs on their team uh, that haven't been spotted, so. At this point, I didn't want to take the chance. Now here, the E50M comes into the middle, um, and he will stay there for a bit. Uh, I am trying to again spot the waffle, and uh, my platoon mate at this time decides to go and help this T32 out to get to the E50M. Um, but you know, um, what have what winds up happening is that when he goes down, apparently the waffle went all the way back to base and has shots on the E100 and the T32 and so unfortunately for him he gets clipped out uh, rather brutally here. Um, I decide to poke over and see if I can spot anything. Unfortunately for me um, I'm spotted but nothing else actually I winds up getting spotted. Um, so I back off I don't want to take a chance I don't have the hit points to take a chance. Excuse me. So. What I'm gonna do is over here I try to sneak forward see if I can get shots on the E15 but then I just uh, know that if I have to um, you know somebody can shoot in the side of my turn and that'll be a very easy pen and what I wind up do doing is I uh, back out of the crater as I went in and I have to go over the top to help the uh, E100 but by the time I get there unfortunately for uh, my friend uh, the E50M uh, makes quick work of him. Now I don't want to go there and make the same mistake so I just back off at this moment um, but what I do uh, uh, is that as soon as I uh, disappear off the radar I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can get good shots uh, across um, you know without getting uh, lit or anything. Over here I um, the RD spotted um, you know, I zoom in, fire, but unfortunately for me, the gun decides to misbehave 
at the exact moment. Again, I'm aiming for Artie. I fire again, but this time I apparently track him, which kind of just baffles me. I'm spotted by something. I'm guessing it's the E50M who was actually uh, moving up, and um, that's exactly what happened. The E50M was trying to like crouch forward to see if he can get a sneaky shot into me. I know he's still there. You know, I know he has, doesn't have like good gun um, depression, so I decided to use these bushes to take a sneaky shot into him. You know, and I put one into him, but he starts moving left to right. As soon as I get spotted, you know, I put the rock, uh, put this house between me and where I'm assuming the TDs are, and I start backing off. Now the game becomes very close. Um, you know, 704 does have some hit points. Um, I really don't have any hit points to spare. Um, and the RD, um, you know, if he gets lit, he's probably dead instantaneously. So at this point, it becomes paramount for us to sort of like um, see if I can, um, you know, light things for the RD and for uh, the 704. Here, you know, I fire at the side of the. Um, E50M. Uh, fortunately for him, he gets lucky and I sort of bounce his side. Uh, it wasn't very well, very well angled, so I'm guessing it probably went a little low and his track stayed to some extent. Now, again, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm not gonna stay uh, where it was. Uh, I know where the waffle, the waffle is moving. Uh, he's moving towards the right side of the map. I'm assuming at this point he kind of like thought that there was an easy kill to have in the STB uh, which was moving towards the middle. I paused there for, for just a second because the replay was starting to lag. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, I'm going to try lighting um, the E50M or the waffle as they make their way across uh, uh, by coming all the way down here and lighting them. Now I see the T20A prototype gets taken out, I see the waffle all the way across. I fire shot quickly because I know the E50M um, will probably spot me, or the waffle can also spot me. I go forward again, take one more shot, you know, this time it connects. And at this point I'm going to start changing positions again. And the more predictive you are in the game, the harder it becomes. The easier it becomes for the enemies to know what to do about you. Um, the 704 makes a great shot, uh, actually kills the T28 who actually was not carrying a fire extinguisher so he burns all the way. Um, another lesson why you should be carrying a fire extinguisher. So the E50M tries to come over there to stop me. At the same time I'm not really interested in him. Uh, I'm trying to take out the waffle who is by himself. And so I go over the top like assuming that the waffle might have actually stopped in the dip but he hadn't he had actually progressed further and so what I'm gonna do is as soon as he gets lit um, I'm gonna use that ridge come over the top and kill him um, at this point now um, as soon as he dies um, you know I know the E50M should be behind somewhere on the ridge you know I don't want a chance uh, dying at this moment so I load a heat round and as soon as he gets caught between behind the rock he makes a mistake of just sticking around far too long I'm aiming for his third which is the weakest spot on the tank and I'm gonna fire when I'm ready and comfortable to take him out hopefully you enjoyed this video uh, rate and subscribe and hope to see you soon